Okay, we're back here live inside the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the silly from the noise. This is exclusive Silicon Angle coverage of O'Reilly Strata Conference in Silicon Valley, a heart of big data of innovation in Santa Clara, California. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante, and we're joined with Todd Papiano, who's the CEO of Continu Continuity, and uh, welcome to the, back to the Cube. Thank you, thanks for having me. So, uh, you're a Cube alumni, you guys are a uh, big splash. Last year you launched the company. Give us the update of what's happening, because you guys have a great team, yep. and uh, Still kind of quiet, but you know, I'm sure you're making your moves. Give us the update. You have a press release that went out uh, Tuesday. Yes, we did. Yeah, we, yeah. We, you know, we launched a company. You know, towards the end of last year at Hadoop World, uh, definitely been heads down. You know, close to Series A, so we raised 10 million bucks, which was nice. That definitely <laughs> helped. Double the size of the team. Brought on some fantastic uh, engineers and developers, and we've been really focusing on the product. So the announcements this week were, you know, we're announcing the uh, public uh, uh, beta availability of our developer suite, which is a uh, framework to enable folks to build big data applications quickly and simply, and the public availability, uh, the beta availability of uh, our developer sandbox. So folks will be able to come to our website and spin up their own uh, version of the continuity app fabric, which is our runtime cloud hosting platform. So it's pretty beefy, it's like eight, eight gig, eight core, quarter terabyte. And so what we want to do is give folks the capability to be able to see the full continuity end-to-end uh, -end app development lifecycle benefit. So you guys, when you launched in New York uh, last fall, I mean, we love that, love, love the launch position because really we were talking about you know, data as a development kit and you know, here we're talking in theCUBE this week about data as code, mm -hmm. which is kind of a riff on infrastructure as code, but you know, it's not yet fully formed yet on kind of what that means, but it feels right in terms of developers want to advance this, this initiative. So you guys are targeting the developers by giving them the tools that they need. Um, so again, whether you're a Python developer, you do the dating size, we had Josh Willis on from Cloudera, there's a huge appetite from developers. Um, yet it's, <laughs> all the talk is about distributions mm -hmm. and a lot of stuff going on. So what is the developer mindset right now? What's the sentiment in the market for those developers? You're targeting them. What are you seeing for them right now? What are some of the, um, what's, what's the sentiment, good? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the feedback we've had has been tremendous. You know, since, uh, since we launched the, the private beta of the developer suite, that a you know, ton of folks use it, we've got fantastic feedback on it, we've improved all the APIs, you know, we've added Eclipse and IntelliJ plugins, uh, we've improved the user interface. I think the sentiment is, look, right now it's still really difficult to build applications on top of Hadoop. You know, yeah, we hear all of this news about the distributions here and more distros springing up like weed. Uh, you know, weeds, I should say. It's a growth uh, market, you know, I mean, Intel comes is. in, that's a big move right there, it big is. money players. Yeah, absolutely, the big guys are coming in. I mean, for us, that's good. Yeah, Goodness, absolutely. right? I mean, we layer over the top of the distro, so, you know, even for all of the Hadoop distro guys out there, yeah. they still, when they go to their customers, it's tough for them to, you know, build applications, we can come in and say, hey, for all of your customers, we can make their lives better. Yeah. Somebody said in theCUBE this week, don't, don't confuse a clear vision with a shipping product, mm -hmm. and, you know, a couple years ago, people put forth this vision of, you know, Hadoop applications, right? You just have said, it's still really hard. What's the big roadblock? I think the roadblocks right now is that, you know, when you think about the distribution stuff, it's infrastructure software. You know, the experience really, even from the distro guys, is still, for a customer, you have kind of the homebrew computing club experience. You've got to take something from here and here and here and, you know, meld that together. What we do is we, you know, layer over the top of that and make it much easier for developers to actually code, deploy, and scale their applications on top of the distributions. And so they want simplicity, and they want that with modern tools, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. Look, developers, you know, uh, are, you know, smart guys, right? You know, but they still like the niceties there. They want more of the Visual Studio, more of the Apple experience, right? And I think for customers, what they want to do is be able to drive to business value and insight much more quickly. So what we do is we enable a much larger cadre of developers. It's not just the Hadoop distributed systems experts. It's pretty much anybody who can write Java out there to actually become a big data application developer. You hear that stat a lot for every you know, five Hadoop deployments, there's one in production. Mm -hmm. um, you feel like you can move that needle? Uh, absolutely, I think the reason that you know, things don't go into production is right now, the general model is you, know, you bring in one of the distro guys, you end up doing a science project, you probably plow some log files in, and that kind of stalls out. Why? Because it's actually very difficult to then go and actually productionize the application. What we can do is actually help customers who want to take you know, their initial science projects and actually turn it into something real, so operationalize the application. So who's coming by the, by the booth here? What are, they, what are they asking you? What kinds of questions are you getting? And you know, how are you responding? We've had actually really, really great traffic by the booth. Uh -huh. I mean, this has been a great show for us. You know, I think the questions we get are, Okay, you know, when can I have it? I want one of those. This is really stinking cool. You know, oh, absolutely. I mean, as soon as people see just how simple we've made it to build apps and deploy, they're very excited. We have a ton of interest. What do you think about the trend about um, bypassing MapReduce and putting stuff right on top of HTFS? Obviously, that was Greenplum's approach. 
Um, you're seeing a lot of different techniques. We also heard from some of the in-memory guys talking about, hey, you know what? You can actually map produce is not so just batch anymore. You can actually write to map produce and make that real time. Mm -hmm. um, is it just how the world view is? Is it depending? Is it? Well, I mean, I think it's I think it's a natural part of the evolution of the stack, right? When we think about where we are in the Hadoop ecosystem, we're like you know maybe two years in, right, to the evolution of it. Traditional BI has been around for 30 years, right? So we still have a bunch of work to do. The, you know, the Green Plum approach and everybody here who's, you know, to me, the flavor of the day of this conference has been, I have SQL for Hadoop. <laughs> okay, great, so you've enabled all the BI guys to do BI applications, but yeah. what's that next generation web logic or JBoss? That's us, right? We enable you yeah. to actually build, you know, real productionized, operationalized applications. They can cross the chasm with you guys. They Absolutely. can do the we'll, BI we'll now and then you can cross them over. Okay, let's talk about yeah. uh, the BI train wrecks coming up. So we're going to, we, you know, <laughs> we, we predicted, we predicted, I predicted, I, not Dave didn't, I said, I predicted that the BI is going to go through a very quick, a lot of dough going to be spent on BI, we got the sequel today, and, and, this, and like the early days of BI, there was some train wrecks, just natural evolution. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> what's your advice to folks who are, don't want to be the train wreck and want to be the good guys? I mean, obviously there's some development involved. Um, any, any, any perspective on that? Well, look, I think you know, there's going to be, you know, there's the Accentures of the world and consultants are going to make a ton of money, right? You know, yeah. we, we, we know that, right? I think that the benefit from people bringing to SQL uh, to Hadoop, though, is that there is an existing 30 years worth of investment. Um, and personnel. In, and personnel, people who understand SQL. Yeah. But those guys are actually very different to the people who were building J2EE apps, you know, last decade, right? So there was still a massive market there for people building operationalized apps, the business logic of what they want to do. SQL's fantastic for doing structured queries, mm -hmm. and by that I mean you can ask questions within a pre-existing search space. I think the major change we're seeing in big data is really a move from schema at read time, uh, schema at write time to schema at read time. What that means is that you can now ask a ton more questions of the data that you didn't even know you had before. Yeah. And the state With, of the art right without a lot of work too. Without, I mean, yeah. some work, but not like massive schema redefinitions re and whatnot, right? I think we've all heard of the, you know, kind of enterprise data warehouse train wreck, so people spend like, you know, six to nine months trying to define their schema and set that up, and it's already out of date. Yeah. The big move here is like, how yeah, do you actually totally. like slash time to business value, slash time to business insight? Awesome, we 100% agree. Let's talk about those developers now. So let's, those guys doing the, the, uh, that development that you're talking about, what do they, what are they doing right now? What's the, what's the psychographic profile of that, that developer? I mean, I think that developer right now is they're sitting down in their IDE, they have a fantastic idea, a big data idea, they want to actually get that you know, built very quickly. We pressure test ourselves on, can somebody actually like build an application quickly in like an afternoon or a day and push it somewhere and show that it works. What they're wanting to do is they want to actually take in you know, the data, take in signals, do you know, streaming analytics, do real-time processing, and actually you know, get some answer out of the backside of it. Are you seeing any kind of preference on storage and how they're handling the data, any kind of uh, how the data management side of it's working? You know, not, not so much. I mean, you know, what we do is, you know, we've abstracted above both HDFS and HBase and give people this high level of abstraction. So instead of dealing with like input and output formats and low level sequence files and T files and, you know, bytes all in HBase, you're really dealing at a higher level that's more yeah. like, you know, hibernate. So for us, it's, you know, we have this data fabric component, it's like data fabric dot right object. Java developers are much more happy about dealing with objects and object abstractions rather than like low level bytes and blocks. So you guys had the big funding, so since you're funding, obviously you got some more resources, so mm -hmm. you're, you're expanding staff, you're out, probably have more travel budgets to go talk to customers and potential customers. What, what, what have you learned since fall, um, the, the big aha that you can, you can say, wow, this is good stuff going on that you can share with the audience. Out yeah, there. I, think there's, I think there's two things. One, you know, I see kind of like two classes of customers. There's what I call the fast followers, right? And these are guys that we see in the kind of like online, social, mobile, gaming verticals. Who have, they have a real pain, they have a problem to solve, and they don't have the capability and wherewithal to stand up you know, a team of like 10 to 15 Hadoop developers. They gravitate very much to our platform because they can just actually build applications quickly. In the enterprise, what I found is, is that, you know, and certainly in some of the verticals, you know, maybe like retail and FinServe, they're, they're really behind the curve, right? They're really still just doing science projects. And you know, we saw that analyst report come out you know, recently about the trough of disillusionment. That's actually good for us. Like, I mean, I think that's happening. I've been talking about that probably, I've been talking about <laughs> yeah. that on theCUBE for a while, yeah, right? Yeah, you have. That's coming, it's right? That's, now. Uh, yeah, that's come now, right? You know, so for me, I'm like, great, there's validation, you know, it's perfect time to market for us. So you yeah. obviously worked at Yahoo. Sorry, so, Dave. The other signal is all the whales are getting in. You guys were talking about this earlier. So you, got, you know, SAP pretty much you know, sort of going mm -hmm. after that space. Oracle, I don't know if it is, but eventually will be. What do you make of that? You know, how, 
I mean, obviously you compete because you're, you're cooler, but what's your, what's your well, take on what they're doing? I mean, I, look, I think all of the traditional you know, data warehousing folks, all the traditional data guys see this move, and I think they understand intrinsically that there's a shift going, but they don't understand exactly what it is, right? You know, I don't see from any of the kind of like leading kind of like BI data warehouse vendors that they get that it's the schema write to schema at read time shift. They just know there's something big going on here, so they're the plowing in. But if you look at their strategies, they're not that you know impressive so far, right? I do like the Green Plum strategy, right? I mean, they have I think put together a very nice product. It'd be nice when it's actually generally available. I'd love to see it, right, and get my hands on it. Uh, but uh, you know, I think that the the big data guys, uh, you know, the general data guys, are say moving into big data and going, there's something here, just like everybody is. But no one's really figured out what that is. And and my personal perspective on it is, in the Hadoop ecosystem specifically, we have a ton of infrastructure but we don't have actually any of those classic application patterns. In traditional BI, we got those over time. We got CRM or self-source automation, supply chain management. We still need those apps to actually explode up and kind of like take over you know, in this ecosystem. And without those apps, this ecosystem goes away and it just becomes a storage engine underneath Teradata or Oracle, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, we're out of time. Um, getting the hook here. Todd, thanks for coming inside theCUBE. Congratulations on all your success. You got a lot more to do, more build out. You're still kind of plowing the fields. Good strategy, I think there's going to be a developer, uh, uh, massive uh, onboarding of these new class of developers as well as the pre-existing kind of uh, BI. Congratulations. Um, continuity, hot startup in Silicon Valley, CEO Todd, be right back with our Thank next you. guest after this short break. <laughs>